So we're going to continue to look at finding volumes of revolution. So we're going to first of all start out by graphing this. And you should realize that this is a parabola. It opens down because it's negative. And it's shifted one unit up. And it's being also bounded by the y equals zero, which happens to be your x-axis. And that happens to be what we're revolving around. So draw your parabola. If needed, put it into your y equals and make a table, look at your points, plot your points. Well, if you do that, you end up getting this parabola here. We also have our axis of revolution. We're looking for the shape that is bounded by our curve and y equals zero. Well, if we look at that shape, that shape is really this right in here. This is what we're being is bounded and that's what we're going ahead and revolving around the x axis. So if you do the reflection of that down, basically you end up getting a shape that looks like this. Being a horizontal axis revolution, we know that we're going to be dealing with x's. Now, your x your bounds are going to be how far left and right you go which in this case are one and negative one and then you have to go ahead and take a look at your radius now your radius your radius is going to go from your function all the way to your axis of revolution and in this case we got to go to the top which is our function minus the bottom which is our axis of revolution of which is zero. So it's basically your function minus zero. And remember, for your disk, you need to square that. So now, all we have to do that we have it set up is work this out. So what I would do is I'd leave the pi in front. I would go ahead and FOIL that. Then I could go ahead and easily integrate each piece. And now that I have each piece integrated, I just have to evaluate it. Plug in one minus what you get when you plug in negative 1. And in this case, we would get 16 pi over 15. Now, with this right here not having any roots in it, I would go ahead and type it into my calculator just as I see it. Not with the pi, just know that your answer is going to have a pi. I've seen way too many people try to work this out by hand, and then they end up getting it wrong. Here, we have our inverse function, y is equal to 1 over x, and y equals 0, which happens to be the x-axis. x equals a third, and x equals 6. So you graph all that, and know that you're looking for the shape that is bounded by all of those. So the shape that's bounded by all of those, so you have your two red vertical lines that you're bounded by, the purple curve, and your x-axis. So the shape that we're dealing with is this shape right in here. That's the shape that we are revolving around the x-axis. So if we revolve that shape around the x-axis, for the most part we would get a shape similar to this here. So once again, it's a horizontal axis of revolution, so we're going to be dealing with x's. So we put pi in front. We know we're going to be dealing with x's. Your bounds are going to be how far left and right you go because you're dealing with x's, which is from a third all the way over to six. And then in this case, we'd have to find your radius. Your radius, once again, is going to go from the top down to the bottom, which once again happens to be your function minus zero, which is just your function. So we end up getting this. Remember, it's easier to integrate when we have a negative exponent rather than leaving it in the bottom. So now all you have to do is increase your exponent by 1. And you might, to evaluate it, might want to drop that negative exponent back down, plug in your 6, minus what you get when you plug in your third. I would probably type this all in at once or do it in my head. And then we end up getting 17 pi over 6. And once again, when you're typing this in, don't use pi. Leave that out because you know you're going to have pi in your answer. Okay.
here we have a sideways parabola. We have x equals zero, which is the y-axis, x equals or y equals zero, which is your x-axis, and y is equal to two, which is a horizontal line at a height of two. We graph that. Then we're looking for the shape that's bounded by all of these, which happens to be highlighted in yellow. And I would encourage you to, when you're doing these, to shade the area that's bounded by all of these so that you're making sure you get the right shape that you're doing. We're going around the y-axis, which is a vertical axis of revolution, so we know we're going to be dealing with y's. Your bounds then would be how far up and down your shaded region goes because you're dealing with y's. It starts at zero, goes up to two. Then your radius, your radius would then be going from what's on the right to what's on the left, which in this case happens to be your function minus what's on the left, which is zero, which is just your function. So then very similar to what we did on the first one, I'd foil that out, integrate each piece, plug in my two minus what I get when I plug in my zero, and then we end up getting 202 pi over five. By the way, if you take this yellow shape and revolve it, you would get something similar to this. So looking at this problem, we have this, which if you wanted to find an easier way to graph this, square both sides and you get y is equal to x squared. You also have this, which is your y-axis. You also have this, which is a horizontal line at a height of one. And then you go ahead and graph that. And we would get this. Now, notice we're not dealing with anything in these second quadrant because here we're dealing with getting positives out of your root so that means x is only positive then so we're in the first quadrant it's a uh, going around this a vertical axis of revolution so we know we're dealing with y's if you do revolve that shape you're going to get something similar to this kind of like a big solid bowl your bounds, because you're dealing with y's, is how far up and down you go. You start at zero, go up to one. And then, once again, you are looking for your radius, which is going to go from what's on the right to what's on the left. It's always big minus small, which happens to be your function minus zero. So if you square that, then you just get y. Integrating y is pretty easy. Evaluate it, plug in one, minus what you get when you plug in zero. And we get pi over two.